Mitochondrial disease, something we had never heard of just under three years ago. A disease that has destroyed my family and our future. Our family of four had always been familiar with hearing loss. With my mom having lost her hearing at 32, my brother at age 14, and myself at age 21. We assumed that our hearing was genetic, and we adjusted our lifestyles accordingly. My mom, my brother, and myself at the time were fairly underweight, um, which again, one would say, is genetic. And so life went on. It was during the more recent years that my mom started complaining of bowel issues and feelings of being unwell and fatigued. We all put this down to stress. She was referred to a colonoscopy procedure in around September 2015, where she felt extremely unwell. It was three months after this procedure that she started experiencing extreme pain, loss of muscle, and extreme swelling in the feet, to the point that they turned purple. She was struggling to get out of bed and suddenly couldn't lift her neck. She lost weight and became fussy about her food. We were extremely concerned and frustrated that she wouldn't eat what we prepared for her, to the point that we planned interventions for an eating disorder. At one point, I told her, out of frustration, that she wasn't eating enough, that she needed to try harder. And that's a conversation I'll always regret. I didn't understand at the time, but she probably struggled to digest food, uh, to swallow the muscles in her esophagus and her swallowing procedures probably didn't work as well as they should have. And these are all things that I just didn't understand at the time. After several specialist appointments, blood tests and poking, nerve induction tests, she was readmitted to hospital for further examination. She had lost all the muscle in her body and she couldn't get up off the toilet couldn't lift her, her neck or hold a pen to write. In hospital, we struggled to put her hearing aids in for her. She couldn't wear her glasses properly. She had tubes down her throat and she had lost the muscle to be able to write. So there was no way of conversing with her to be able to understand what we were trying to convey and for her to be able to talk to us. She became extremely frustrated trying to take the tubes out to the point that staff restrained her. This was exceptionally heartbreaking for us to know that we couldn't communicate anymore. She suddenly, uh, she suddenly um, picked up an infection in the hospital and they aggressively treated with antibiotics, which in hindsight, we believe, escalated the condition. She passed away three days later in February 16. After her death, there were many unanswered questions and disbelief. Discussions with doctors and reflection on family history led to the belief that her death was related to a heart issue that my brother had suffered six months prior. He had been experiencing symptoms that reflected a heart attack, and biopsy results revealed shortly before her death that he had mitochondrial cytopathy. Given this information, I felt compelled to get myself tested and confirm whether or not this could be mitochondrial disease. Six weeks later, they revealed that I had MELAS, which is mitochondrial encephalomyopathy, lactic acidosis, and stroke-like episodes. Still reeling from the loss of my mom and my best friend, I then realized that this was far more complex than anticipated. My brother had also lost his mom and business partner, who had started his company with him. Four months after my mom passed away, my brother developed myoclonic seizures, experiencing twitching in the face and legs causing him to fall suddenly and injuring himself. In December 2016, he was rushed to hospital with severe migraines and vomiting. After being discharged a few weeks later, he experienced another seizure, which caused him to lose his vision. He stumbled to find his phone one night because he had lost his vision suddenly and had to use Siri to call my dad. His vision took weeks to recover, and when it recovered, he had another episode. And this continued for a few months in and out of hospital with periods of blindness, regardless of the fact that he has hearing impairment. This continued again, and devastatingly, he was unable to drive, which had a psychological impact on him 
given that he was a paramedic and he saved lives. Very quickly he began to lose weight, struggled to eat, became extremely frustrated and started slurring his words. He then experienced stroke-like episodes that caused uh, weakness in the left side of his body. It also caused him to visualize little people walking around on the floor. This was not the brother that I knew. After a two-week period in hospital, he appeared to have recovered from most symptoms and was engaging in life again. He had finally been able to get back to the beach and spend time with friends, but it was here that we believe he caught an infection and developed a nasty cough. Five days later, he passed away, three weeks before his 35th birthday. Having lost my mom and brother within 16 months, I then suddenly realized that I too face the same challenges and pain and further disability that they did. Fear overwhelmed me, and I thought of my partner losing me the same way that I've lost my mom and my brother, and that devastated me. I'm frightened of not being able to hear or see, afraid to lose my mind, afraid to walk and talk, having all of these symptoms combined. I've been consumed with coming to terms with losing half my family, being diagnosed with the disease myself, and realizing that we may not be able to have a family of our own. The desire to become a mom then suddenly became so much stronger after losing my own mom. I reflected on what a special mother she was and how she guided me and molded me and my brother into people who have compassion, resilience, and warm personalities. I often catch myself doing and saying the same things that she did and displaying the same characteristics that she had. I want to be half the mom that she was and create the same love and devotion to our children. This burning desire then led my, my husband and I to inquire about pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, which is PGD. And for those of you who are not familiar with this, it's aimed at genetically testing embryos before you transfer them to try and get the lowest mutation loading. This has been an incredibly challenging time for us, emotionally, ethically, financially, and with a ton of hormones. Unfortunately, it's been like finding a needle in a haystack, with no success in finding suitable embryos and five cycles later. While many might suggest that we look at other options, such as fostering, adoption, or egg donors, this is a really personal choice. After having lost my mum and brother and me learning that I have the disease, biological family and offspring have become extremely personal and meaningful to me. I want to hold on to every bit of my mum and know that I've inherited something very unique from her. I want to always carry that with me. I also want my child to resemble me somehow. And it's a really strong reality that I may not be along for much longer or perhaps not to the age that I would like. Um, and I would like my husband to be able to look at our child and say, you know, you have your mom's smile or you have your mom's um, stubbornness or whatever it might be. So it's a, it's a personal choice, but I, I believe it's a reasonable one. Recently, we've heard of the groundbreaking procedure mitochondrial donation that has taken place in the UK. And this gives us a glimmer of hope. This procedure for us would mean that we could have a healthy child, yet still know that we've created this little human. We don't believe that this would be playing God or designing a baby. It would just allow us to minimize the impacts of this devastating disease. We hope that Australia can take after the UK and legalize this procedure to support and provide patients with mitochondrial disease as an option to have a healthy child. I believe this disease has taken far too much for me already, and I'll continue to push for a cure. Thank you.